Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. That's still my email address. It is still in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms, please reach out to me directly. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the update of a cult classic. This is the 2021 version of the Oris Aquas depth gauge. The first one came out in 2013. Updates were made to the model in 2021, and so that is the variant I hold in my hand. In stainless steel, it's 45.8 millimeters in diameter, 15.5 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 52.9 millimeters across the wrist. So we're going to throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and get a sense of the size, which is massive. Being almost 46 millimeters in diameter, it does take up all the real estate on my wrist. And yet, somehow, it does look like I could actually wear this thing. Zoom out even a little bit more. The more my wrist you see, the more it starts to feel like this is something I could wear. So I would say my wrist size or larger. Oddly enough, it comes down to the lugs. The lugs on these Aquas models, they are downturned and they sort of curve around your wrist so that there's not much of a conflict in wearing the big Oris Aquas models on a moderately sized wrist. And you can see this down the barrel shot here. The lugs are not quite out over the edge of my wrist, not quite. Let's take a look at the cuff shot. Because of the overlap of the bezel, it could get hung up on shirt sleeves, but jackets should be okay. It is a proprietary bracelet system, but before I mentioned that you're going to have to use Oris straps and bracelets here, I should mention that there's now a quick release system. So by just popping this little retainer on the bottom, if you have more nails than I do, it's a little bit easier to do. By popping that retainer open, you can easily remove the bracelet or the Oris factory strap from the case without a tool. Integration here, so the lugs taper down into the bracelet, which tapers down towards the clasp. You can see faces of the links are satin finished. We have polish on the top. The center links are satinated. Despite the accessible price point of Oris watches, you can see here screws are used to fix removable links in place. And we have a half size link or an irregular size link on each side in case you do find your wrist size in between primary links. You've got a little bit of incremental adjustability there. There's more inside the clasp where three pairs of divots have been drawn through the metal. And so you can use your strap tool to dismount the spring bar and change the anchoring point inside the clasp. You also have this fold-out mechanism that can be used over a wetsuit, a dry suit when diving. Actually, if you're like me and you just don't like to swim, but you live in the Northeast or a cold place, you can also use this to deploy the watch to use it over a thick sweater or winter coat, so it can be handy in that regard as well. The clasp features both polish and satination. You can see this one still has some of the original packing stickers on it. The condition is excellent. And it's thick gauge steel, single fold deployment with twin triggers. You have to press them both for this to open, so it's not going to open inadvertently. And that's important with a large and heavy watch like this. This. The case band is distinctive as we have a tumble home from the case back up to the top. See how it has a little bit of a conical slant to it? So it's wider at its base than it is underneath the bezel. A combination of polished lug hoods, satin finished mid case, very much unlike the Seamasters and Submariners of the Omegas and the Rolexes of the world, as these lugs are really sharply broken out from the case band. We have a screw down crown here for this 500 meter water resistant watch. You can see there's media blast and satin on the crown, and that the crown guards are fixed by screws, so if they do get gouged, they can be removed during service and replaced. We have a polished outer edge of the bezel that is very sharply knurled and easy to grip. We have a ceramic insert in black for scratch resistance. There's a very satisfying 120 click action really, no issue right there. Very pleasing. And then you can see you line that up with the minute hand, we'll do a loom shot so you can see this watch in the dark. All three hands are loomed on the dial so you know whether your second hand is in operation and you know whether your dive watch is running in the depths in the dark. The bezel is useful whether you're diving or not, as you can use it as a zero to 60 minute count up timer. I often find dive bezels easier to read than a chronograph null, so you don't have the big downstream maintenance costs. The dial is quite layered. The first step is the sapphire, and you can actually see the printing on the underside of the sapphire for the depth gauge scale. The way this works is there's actually a perforation in the crystal up at 12 o'clock, and the pressure 
inside this sapphire tube will cause the meniscus of the water to act as a depth gauge. And you can see that there's calibration in meters. And so it, that meniscus will act as a depth gauge that is completely unpowered requires no lubrication or additional maintenance. We've seen IWC and JLC and Panerai use depth gauges in the past, but some, like the Panerai, even involve batteries. This is completely unpowered and maintenance-free, and yet it serves the exact same purpose at a much more accessible price. The dial base is matte and black to resist glare. An upscale feature for an accessible watch, we have rhodium-plated and polished steel applique indices. It's a lovely white, black and yellow color scheme here. This watch is an ISO 6425 diver. The ISO 6425 is the definition since 1996 of what a dive watch is, and this watch is that. Now I'll fire it up so you can see it in action. It has a Salida base inside, an automatic base. that beats away at four hertz or eight beats per second. We have a stop seconds or hacking function. We also have a quick set date. Now, there were some changes made to this version of the depth gauge. First, legibility of the meniscus inside the gauge has been improved here. Second, we have the addition of the quick release system for the bracelet. And then finally, the alignment of the conversion table on the back. It's said to be 90 degrees to the 12 o'clock position, which theoretically will make it easier to read from this angle if you are using this table to convert from meters to feet or vice versa. So those are the three major changes. Now internally, it is an SW200, which is Salida's version of the ETA2824. So bi-directional automatic winding, 38 hour power reserve, hacking seconds, quick set date, four hertz beat rate pivoting on 26 joules. So a very tough and universally serviceable tractor automatic movement. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.